next speaker is Yonbo Odingal of Mumbai. You have the floor, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support this motion before the 11th Parliament of Guyana that has been submitted by the opposition. This motion in particular, Mr. Speaker, raises several questions and issues that highlights the mismanagement, confusion, and misdirection of the Guyana Power and Light Incorporated. And to be specific, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to focus on the be it resolved clause on page two of the motion. And I quote, that this National Assembly calls on GPL and the government to abide by the procurement laws of this country and ensure that contracts are fairly and transparently awarded so that the programs in place for this sector can proceed without unnecessary delays or clouds of unfair or corrupt practice. However, Mr. Speaker, I must remind the House that the GPL is now the recipient of a windfall amount of billions of dollars as a result of low oil prices and because of the balances that was left, because of proper management that was put in place prior to the advent of the new government. Mr. Speaker, solar, wind, and any other form of renewable energy cannot be the base load of any developing nation. Therefore, I think it's urgent and very important that the minister tell us how will Guyana get up to speed, in particular, if at some future point Guyana wants to aim towards the 200 megawatt facilities, which will be able to put the country in a development mode. Mr. Speaker, it's important that we understand the objective of this project that recently gained the attention of the Guyanese public. The constant blackouts by GPL have been an historical concern of all Guyanese people. Just any attempt to reduce the incidence of blackouts is welcomed by the Guyanese public. We all know that the blackouts had basically disappeared on the PVC. I mean, you can make the comparison. When we first came to power, blackouts were three weeks, four weeks. And we had a little touch of it, maybe one day every month, which wasn't too bad. The blackouts have again prevailed. I think both of our speakers on this side have pointed out the point that, made the point that many people fridge, refrigerators, the washers, the dryers, the stoves, and many of the domestic appliances have been destroyed by the blackouts. And nothing seems to be done about that. Well, my, I, Mr. Speaker, you heard the gentleman, you should pull him up. But he just reminded me that when we got in the power, there were no appliances by anyone. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this particular scandal pro prone project is an IDB EU funded with the objective to reduce technical and commercial losses. The approach, Mr. Speaker, is to upgrade distribution lines, which if done properly, will reduce technical losses and introduce smart meters in the system with the objective of reducing commercial losses. Again, Mr. Speaker, this project is the brainchild of the PVC government. Mr. Speaker, let us be specific. Allow me to provide a brief description of the project to this National Assembly. Project name, Power Utility Upgrade Program. The objective of this project, the general objective of this project or program is to enhance efficiency and corporate performance in order to prepare the organization to supply electricity in a sustainable manner over the long term. As part of the effort to reduce the technical and commercial losses, the IDB agreed with GPL for an integrated approach, whereby one would, could measure losses per sub-area and then based on a planned approach to reduce losses through one meter replacement with smart meters Two, rebuilding the distribution network, one could target loss reduction in a precise, measurable manner. Budgets and priorities were defined based on this approach. Pilot programs were carried out. The plan was to focus on areas of high losses with the integrated approach. These areas could be reduced to 8% technical and commercial losses. The EU 
IDB project major component was less was loss re reduction. Core to this is the implementation of smart meters in combination with building distribution network. The project had three elements, A, B, and C. And if A, as we all know, is over budgeted by $1.3 billion, it could mean that the total exercise, exercise might be downgraded to meet the needs of A. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Mr. Speaker, I want to use this moment to do two things. First, I want to congratulate the tender, the, t the tender appeal board for handing DDL the juice transaction when it came, became clear that the original position was unfair, incorrect, and corrupt. Public procuring commission. Mr. Speaker, at the end of my presentation, the responsible minister or agency should use his initiative and take this pending D GPL matter to the to the same Public Procurement Commission to find a resolution to this matter. Two, I want to congratulate the Chairman of the GPL Board, Mr. Robert Badal, for his recent but late decision to call for a more transparent but efficient process GPL. While he was not specific for his reasons to make such call, it can be interpreted that he's also burdened by the recent decision made to grant CMC a contract as $1.3 billion above two, com two other companies. But I need to remind Mr. Bodal that he cannot go towards selective tendering. Any tender process should be open and should be available to all. Mr. Speaker, every tender board and every government make mistakes. Mistakes is part of life. But when you make mistakes and you know it's a mistake, you must correct it, or find ways to correct it. Mr. Speaker, corruption or improper decisions must not be tolerated. Mr. Speaker, this project is vital to the long-term efficiency of GPL. But incompetence and political interference has led to a delay of over 12 months. Mr. Speaker, during this period, the decision-making process has been polluted by different sets of evaluators. And as of today, the issue is still tarnished by accusations and counter-accusations. Mr. Speaker, tender process should be transparent, and the evaluation report should not be clouded in secrecy. The National Assembly Public Accounts Committee should be provided with the names of the evaluators, and if it's true, they should, if it's true that there's more than one evaluation, the individual specifics of this evaluation should be provided so that the rejections can be looked at and after the reports are, are submitted. Mr. Speaker, incidents like this will can strength, strengthen the call on this side of, of the House for the need for a more vigilant and transparent procurement system. Mr. Speaker, for example, let's look at the GPL meter fiasco. There were five bidders, and the lowest bidders were two Guyanese companies in partnership with foreign entities. One of the companies, Cummins Electrical, a company that has done outstanding work in Guyana, and whose reputation in electrical works have been second to none. The other company is Fixed Depot, a company that has provided GPL with over 70% of its prepaid meters. What is interesting here, Mr. Speaker, is that both these companies' bid prices were $1 to $1.3 billion lower than the price of CMC the company has recommended. I'll give you the, the, the numbers here, Mr. Speaker. CMC bid price was $4 billion, $614,000 million. Cummins electrical bid price was $3,671,000,000. Fix it at depot, $3,520,000,000. Mr. Speaker, there are occasions when higher bid prices justify the decision to accept the highest bidder, but not in this case. Mr. Speaker, the government and GPL are armed with the requisite information to annul this process and select either of the two local bidders. Mr. Speaker, let's look a moment at the company that has handled the project. And my criticism is not to the company per se, but I'm criticizing the process. So I'm not in any way trying to target CMC, which in many ways is a reputable company. Furthermore, Mr. Speaker, I will present the National Assembly a study that was done by GPL. I have a copy of the document. It's right here. If I know you, you have said that we should not speak on documents unless it's brought before the National Assembly, but it's right here. 
There's a study that was carried out. Consultancy services, contract for supervision, final report, volume one, main report, two and three test reports, November 2014 by Caribbean Engineering and Management Consultants. The comments extract from this consultant review. Selection of contractor. The form CIC selected for this substantial contract is not a construction company, but being mainly a trading company for the export of Chinese engineering products. It appears that the pre-qualification or post-qualification assessment was either not performed or adequately performed during the tendering and selling phase of this project. The contractor CMC engaged other Chinese firms to perform all aspects of the contract except for purchasing goods for the contract, and even this aspect was not adequately performed, evident by shortage of materials and factory, factory defects. In essence, Mr. Speaker, we bypass the two local companies, both Cummins Electrical and Fixie Depot, with their respective partners who are qualified to install meters and plant poles why CMC has no history of installing any meter, and certainly with the Guinea history of planting poles, we don't need a Chinese company to come to Guinea to teach us how to plant poles. Mr. Speaker, this project is not rocket science. Its implementation does not require Einstein. As a matter of fact, Mr. Speaker, let me quickly tell you about this company that will walk away with $1.3 billion, which could have gone to pay our teachers or a bonus to bicycle workers. Mr. Speaker, this National Assembly must come together and object to waste. Waste is not good for a poor country. Giving 1.3 billion additional dollars to a company who is just a broker is waste and borders on corruption. Mr. Speaker, while in Guyana, while in government, while in government, and this is very important, and I'm speaking to the National Assembly as a Guyanese. Uh, no, I'm speaking as a Guyanese. This is important. If the PPP was in power and they had given this contract to CMC, other than Cummins Electrical, we would have been accused of racism. We would have been accused of racism. If we had rejected Fixed Depot, we would have been called anti-national. So I think it's important that the appropriate minister of this relevant agency, that he have a responsibility to Guyanese taxpayer to explain why $1 billion, $1.3 billion was given to another company when empirical evidence clearly shows that either of the Guyanese company in co collaboration with their foreign entity could have installed the meters or plant electrical poles, plant some poles. And again, planting poles is not rocket science, Mr. Speaker. I'm sure you have planted some poles in the old days. Maybe you catch birds or parrots. I am I'm, I'm not going over the line, sir. But we all have planted some poles. But these are huge poles. <laughs> I'm grazing, I'm grazing. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this obvious malpractice points to the struggle, the struggle that my friends on the other side, the struggle they face with providing the good life for all Guyanese, including the small contractors and the small businessmen. I think it's important that we empower small business people, small businesses, and urge them to look at this matter carefully. Now we have, Minister Hughes spoke Briefly, and I think Minister Gaskins, to, to some degree, spoke a little about what the green, the green economy would look like and about renewable energy. Renewable energy, Mr. Speaker, has always been a fundamental goal of developing countries. But renewable energy has never been the base load for, electrical, for, electrical, for development of any economy in particular economy that are moving towards manufacturing and economies that are trying to get stable source of electricity. Elect renewable energy acts as a good backup system. Our, our effort 
to keep the green economy going or move to the direction should be hydro. If you, if you look around the world, and I like to quote the Pacific Northwest or Canada, even Panama recently, hydroelectricity is the key to development. Not because it's so much that it's cheaper, because of the reliability of hydroelectricity. Nine months a year is better than two days a year with GPL. <laughs> so my, my own view is that the government that's in power today, and my friend, Minister Patterson, there's an obligation to come before this National Assembly and put forward a national plan for energy development, not just some reports of what you're going to do up to 2017, what is our plan to move this country forward in the area of electricity and energy development? How much of megawatts of hydropower? How many megawatts of renewable energy? How many years it will take to develop? What's going to be the cost? What's going to be the period? We're now on the verge of having our access to oil and gas. Maybe oil refinery might not be something in the distant future, but maybe gas could be something in the distant future. So if we combine gas, Hydro, renewable energy, we can look at clean, clean energy. And so the whole concept of green economy is not just about painting some buildings green and wearing green ties, but it's about the notion of moving towards using a strategy that can take us toward the world of development. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm urging my friends on the other side not to interpret my presentation of one of being obnoxious, but one of trying to learn. We have a tendency in this National Assembly not to learn from each other. We show disdain for each other. We, we, and we have to grow past that. I don't think I've said anything that's anti-development. So <laughs> I don't think I've said anything anti-development. I believe in pro-growth, I believe in an economic and a development plan, and I believe that we should have plans that will show and point out where we're going with electricity. The people of Guyana cannot continue, cannot continue living like reptiles with this blackout. It, it, it has to come to an end, and, uh, and I'm hoping that the, the, the the ministers and the member of cabinet on the other side, we can sit down and put together a national plan that you can bring to the National Assembly. And maybe we can have a select committee and we can work together and say this is ours. Let's try and find something. There must be something we can do and say it's ours, as opposed to yours and mine. There's gotta be something. And what else could it be but a national development plan that focuses on electricity and energy development? Something that wraps the arms of our future and our children. So 20, 30 years from now, we all can say, this is ours. Thank you. I thank the Honorable Member for his statement.